right around 12 uh, noon today, the uh, HTSO vehicle was in this lane right here facing north. There's an SUV that's on its side over there next to the crane was in this inside lane, I mean in this outside lane, both facing north. The light turned green. As they started entering the intersection, the crane, which was coming this way, traffic was already stopped for the red light, but for, he knew he was having some type of issues with his brakes, went into the turn lane to go south to avoid hitting the other cars that were facing east. He came across the intersection as the patrol vehicle and the SUV start traveling this way, the crane makes impact with the patrol vehicle here. Takes the patrol vehicle, spins it in a 90 degree turn, and then in the same time, the patrol vehicle hooks into the SUV. Now, as you can imagine, as the, the patrol vehicle turns sideways, it starts moving because of the weight of that crane in this easterly directions, and you can see that based on the skid marks. So as that vehicle is now made impact, it tra travels eastbound through this median here. We'll walk this way. As that patrol vehicle now is at this point, you'll see that there is a, a minivan parked here lodged up against the bus. That minivan was in the turn lane waiting to turn left here at the intersection. It gets shoved backwards in between the dump truck and the Heartline bus, which was also stopped at traffic because the eastbound lights were red. East and westbound lights were red. The, 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 the SUV now, at this point, is now at the front end or the, the, the back end of the police car and between the, the wrecker and the Heartline bus. And it is now being sandwiched forward between the, the dump truck, the van, and the Heartline bus. So we'll move forward and show you where exactly what, what, what happened then. As you can see, the vehicle, the, police, the patrol car now, had already been turned at a 90 degrees angle and was facing back to the west. The SUV that is overturned by the weight and the momentum of the crane. As the SUV and the patrol car reached the end of the bus, the SUV then veered off to the left and overturned. The patrol car stopped where it's at with the left front tire of the crane resting on the patrol vehicle's right rear door just, just inches away from the driver, which was the female deputy. Can you talk about the bus real quick? The, the, the bus was stopped, stopped here and it was directly behind this, this uh, dump truck. The van was in the left turn lane to go left. This van ended up getting struck after the, after the crane struck the patrol vehicle and the SUV, and it moved back to this easterly direction. It second impact was the van that then was shoved backwards, traveling with the weight of all three vehicles now, and it forced it back into, into this car here as you see it where it sits. When, when the two vehicles, when the SUV and the police car that was traveling north were impacted by the crane, all three vehicles then traveled eastward and then struck the van, which was then the second impact, here. That van then, then was shoved forward into here while the, while, the, while the SUV and the patrol car continued on in their journey east. So it left this van here. Remember, it was in the turn lane turning left. It left it here, and the patrol vehicle and the SUV kept on going. How many people on the bus at the time? I don't know. So as we continue forward, as you can see, as the SUV reaches this point here, it's the back of the patrol car is at this point. It rolls off and then overturns. Patrol vehicle ends up here where you see it. And I'll take you up there, and we'll go back behind it, and you'll see where the left front tire was actually sitting on top of the police vehicle, and Steps Wrecker thankfully got here quick enough.
that they were actually able to lift the crane out off the top of the patrol vehicle so that, uh, that the deputy, be, deputy could be removed by uh, rescue personnel. So we'll go back around this way here. As you, can, as, as you can see, this wheel right here was actually physically sitting on the driver's passenger, I mean the rear passenger door was actually sitting here as it had, had drove over the top of it. And so actually when steps got here, they had to actually hook onto the bumper, lift it up, and set it off to the side so the rescue personnel could get here. So as you can see, she only had a very, 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 limited compartment that was the only remaining part of the vehicle that wasn't destroyed and and that's probably what saved her life along with the the roll bar we have in the cage the police cage in the roll bar was actually probably instrumental on keeping a lot of the structure and integrity of the car from uh from collapsing in on top of her so you know fortunately uh, we're not investigating a fatality here not only for the deputy, but for all these citizens as well. It could have obviously ended up a lot more tragic. Larry, looking at what we're seeing right now, how remarkable is it that that's not the case? Well, we've all seen accidents with 90% less damage that have ended up being fatalities. This car looks like it hit an IED, you know, and, and the fact that this deputy, you know, was by a miracle of grace of God, was sitting in that one compartment. Fortunately, nobody else was in that car. Otherwise, it would have certainly been a fatality. And, and, and you look at the result of the entire circumstances here. You know, we have the victim in the, in the van. We're, we're thankful that she only received minor injuries or whoever that may, may have been. And all of this, I mean, it could have certainly been a lot more tragic than it has been. But, you know, our deputy's still in serious condition. You know, we're still, we're still uh, not out of the woods yet with her. So uh, right now, investigators are, are working with the Division of Motor Carriers, which is a part of the Department of Transportation. They're gonna impound the truck. We're going to take it back. We're going to look at the evidence that, that uh, involving the brakes, uh, skid marks, travel, all the forensic evidence that we know that we look at. Uh, there are going to be a lot of experts looking at it to determine just exactly what caused this here today.